As the NVIDIA Technology Conference continues this week in San Jose, there is a great deal of focus on security in the growing artificial intelligence industry. The Santa Clara-based chip maker announced a partnership this week with Oracle that's focused on what's known as sovereign AI. This is when individual countries or companies produce artificial intelligence using their own infrastructure and workforce, allowing them to keep the data secure. Jensen Huang, the founder and CEO of of NVIDIA called Sovereign AI a cultural and economic imperative. For more on this effort, we are joined now by Ahmed Banafa, engineering professor at San Jose State University and a cybersecurity expert. Professor, we always appreciate the time. It's good to see you. L lay this out for us, uh, if you could. What are the advantages for, for governments and companies to set up their own separate AI systems? Good to see you, Alex. Uh, it's basically, number one, is the privacy and security um, economic advantage, that will be some of the things that you can see, strategic growth, because now you own everything. The infrastructure, as you mentioned in the in the report, is you own all the data centers and the hardware. You have the people are, you know, from the country working on the uh, on the AI and also the data you are using, it actually belongs to the country. And beside that, when the institution that you're working with, whether it's schools, universities, or companies are within the country. So you have complete control on the flow of the AI. All right, so uh, I know that the CEO of NVIDIA described these as being essentially AI factories for various companies or, or business entities here. W what is it going to take for countries like the United States to create their, their own broad AI systems? What is this going to look like? We are really have you know most of the pieces for the for the sovereign AI because the hardware is here in the United States. The uh, uh, we're talking about the talents. It's here in the United States. It's a matter of uh, controlling the other pieces, which is you know like the semiconductors uh, that use the chips that use in the in the AI. We need to manufacture them inside the United States. And the, the data itself, the, the, we control the data uh, coming from, you know, coming from different parts or different, different areas. So when you talk about, uh, uh, you know, a sovereign AI, the United States is almost there. They, they, have, they have something similar to that. All right. So what is the significance of this partnership that was announced uh, at the conference this week between NVIDIA and Oracle, two massive tech companies here in Silicon Valley? What, what is it going to mean to combine Oracle's cloud computing systems with NVIDIA's powerful super chips that we've been talking a lot about that, that are obviously crucial to operating AI systems? It's more power and processing because the the chips of the super chips that uh, mentioned in the Nvidia uh, event yesterday is is actually something huge and you're talking about 30 times more powerful than the H100 that's the one available now in the market uh, with less power and that's the that's the amazing thing about it and uh, when you when you talk about the cloud uh, uh, infrastructure from uh, from oracles you are giving them the place and the infrastructure where they can use the chips and now start the process mm -hmm. what's left is the talents and the data and this is something they can fill and they can add to the mix and is that going to sort of democratize ai in a sense for you know countries that are that, that don't have the the same kind of resources as let's say the united states well, the, the problem with the uh, uh, with the server and AI is actually exactly what you mentioned. It's uh, it's somehow it's isolating countries because they are running within their own speed and they're they're uh, advancing uh, the AI within own uh, devices. So so in order to have a collaboration with other countries, now you are breaching out or reaching out to outside the country. Now it's not anymore the sovereign AI that we're talking about it. It's, it's the whole idea of sovereign AI is not to rely on another country just in case something happened, then you're going to shut you down completely and then you're paralyzed when it comes to AI. All right, but help me understand this. I mean, if, if my AI system here in this country or with this company is, is scraping the Internet, looking for data, as we know AI systems do, um, is it going to be able to, to access information still from other countries? It's still, it's still going to be able, we're still going to have sharing of data in some sense, right? We're not going to all just be in our own AI bubbles. That, that is true. It's a, it's a matter of the second stage after that. <clears throat> which is the filtering when when mm. collecting the data is coming for all the systems machine learning ai they do that all the time you go to the next stage which is clearing or cleaning the data what exactly you're looking for which data you want it to be included in processing and training the ai this is when you, you decide about which country you want to have the data from 
All right, uh, Ahmed Banafa, engineering professor at San Jose State University. We have to leave the conversation there. Appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you, Alex.